So I'm going to start off uh, just giving you guys an overview of what the 2020 Summer Games Sports and Fitness Challenge is. Um, so some of the stuff we're going to cover, just an overview of, of what it is. We'll go over what the competition format looks like. We'll talk about how you sign up, how you earn points, what we need from you as athletes um, to help make this go smoothly. Um, and then we'll take a quick break in there. I'll answer any questions on, you know, kind of the sports and fitness challenge overview. Um, and then I'm going to share with you guys the activities for the challenge. Um, and then I'll show you guys the activity tracker that you will be using to track all of your activities to earn points. And then we'll open it up for questions again at the end. So uh, as I'm going, feel free to type your questions in the chat. Um, and I'll make sure I answer those as best I can um, as we go along. Yeah, Patrick? Yes? Just, just do your presentation, and uh, Alicia's role will be to cycle through that chat. So she'll catch those questions for you. Perfect. All right, so what is the Sports and Fitness Challenge? Um, as Jeff alluded to, while we're calling it kind of a virtual summer games or a virtual challenge, um, you know, it's not done online. So regardless of um, if you have good internet connection or what your technology capabilities might be, you can still participate in this challenge. Um, so again, you don't have to have internet, don't have to have Microsoft Office or anything cool on your computer to do it. Um, as we were putting this together, we thought well, we need a way to engage um, all of our athletes and uh, everyone in the county programs in this downtime. We haven't had competition really since winter games this year, and we know that not all of our athletes do winter games. So for some of you, it's been even longer than that. Um, so without having that, we want to promote staying active, but doing it in a way that we still have social distancing. So the way we put this together is that you can do all of these activities um, at your house. Maybe if you have a, a way to go get to a park or another public area. Um, but all of these activities are things that you can do while still maintaining social distancing measures um, and, and staying safe while doing them. Um, and then, again, we wanted to have a way to get you guys back to competition. I know that's one of the biggest things we love about Special Olympics is uh, competing against one another. So this will be a way to bring back that competitive flair to everyone. Um, I know I've been mentioning that um, – all the, my nouns have been athletes, but this is open to really everyone in your county program. So, um, and I would highly encourage your unified partners, your coaches, um, or other class A volunteers in your county program to participate with you on this. They can help you guys earn points. Um, and we'll get to the competition format a little bit later, but um, the more people you have participating, the chance that you guys are gonna have to win um, as a county. We are breaking the competition down really into two halves. So on June 12th, we're gonna have a virtual opening ceremonies and that's really gonna kind of kick off the competition. So the following day on June 13th is when you guys can start doing all these activities and earning points. The first half of competition is going to go through July 5th. So everything that I'm telling you right now and what we're going over, really pertains to the first half of competition. There will be a slightly different format for the second half. Um, and we'll give you all of those details later. We very well may do another session like this to explain um, if we change up the second half activities, how, what the requirements are for those activities. We'll cover all that at a little bit of a later date. So today we're focusing on really the first half of competition. So what's the competition format like? Um, this is unique in that this is going to be a county versus county competition. There are no individual competitions in this or awards. Um, so when you're earning points, you're earning them for your county program. Um, the counties were divisioned by size. There are eight per division. So just like you would see in any of our other divisions and competition, and I don't want to go too much into this because I know Buzz is going to present on this a little bit later. Um, so I'll let him get more into the details on that. Um, but again, you're earning points for your county program. Um, each county program is going to get a discount on the 2021 
summer games. Again, Buzz, Buzz will give you more details on that. The one cool thing is that all anyone who participates will get a, a commemorative ribbon, and they're going to be bigger, cooler, better colors. Um, it's going to look a lot different than the normal ribbons that we have for our competition. So um, again, you as an individual, you're going to get a really sweet commemorative ribbon for this event, and then you're also going to have an opportunity um, to represent your county and you know be able to say, hey, our county was better than the others in this division when it came to this competition. So how to sign up? It's really simple. There are no entry forms at all for this event. Um, really, your entry is just completing the activities. So as long as you complete some of the activities in the challenge, if you do it for one day, that's entering this competition. We hope that you do it for all the days of the competition, um, but as long as you do it once, that counts as entering. You're gonna get really two things from your county coordinator, a listing of the activities, and your daily activity tracker. I'm gonna cover both of those documents in the later part of this presentation, um, but that's what you're looking for from your county coordinator. Um, there's going to be digital and printed versions. So again, for those of you that if you have good internet connection and you maybe have Microsoft Excel, we're gonna give you an Excel version so that you can keep track of everything on your computer. And if you don't have that, again, that's okay. There's going to be a PDF version that you can print. Um, and we've also gotten these out to the county coordinators so that um, hopefully if you don't have internet or it's not possible for them to email those forms to you, the county coordinators can help distribute printed versions um, to you if needed. Um, so my, my point there is look out for communication from your county coordinator um, or your coaches. They're going to be the folks that are sending you these documents and again, the activity tracker is the main thing that you're looking for. That's what you want to track all of your progress on. And I'm going to cover that here in a little bit. All right, so you guys are probably wondering, how do we earn points? So there are really two activity categories. There is a sports and fitness category. And um, in that category, you need to complete at least three of those activities per day. You can do more if you want. So if just doing those three activities isn't quite enough for you, um, we get that. You can go ahead and do more, but doing three is the minimum to earn points. Um, and those activities are gonna be a mixture of Fit Five and sports activities. So we've chosen um, some activities from the Fit Five cards. You guys are familiar with those. Um, and then also some sports activities. So it's a good mixture. If you complete at least three of those activities per day, you will earn 10 points per day. Um, and I'll, again, go over a little bit of that in a little bit as well. The second category is the health and well-being category. So you need to complete at least two of those activities per day. Um, they'll be worth five points if you complete two activities. Um, and again, we'll cover those activities here shortly. One thing I wanna emphasize is that there are multiple levels within the activity categories. You're gonna see these in a, in a little bit when I pull up the, the listing of activities, but we wanted to make sure that we gave a variety of exercises and activities so that regardless of your ability level and what you might be able to do, there's something in this competition that you can do um, safely um, and you know over the five or six weeks that this competition runs so again I want to emphasize there's something for everyone we created three levels there's a level one and M of activities there's level two activities and there are level three activities so it's kind of structured a little bit similarly to what you would see in track and field um, with how the levels are structured all right, so what do we need from you guys? Um, we need you to work with your coach um, or county coordinator or maybe a parent or guardian or caregiver um, to help select your levels and activities. So, uh, you know, you may be look at, at what the activities are and say, well, I, I don't know if I should be in level two or level three. That's where I would recommend, you know, reach out to your coach, let them know, hey, I, you know, I need some guidance here and they can help you select the proper level and then also give you some ideas for which activities to do, you know, every week or, or every couple days. Um, we also need you guys to accurately track which activities you complete. Again, this is how you're earning points. 
So you wanna make sure that you're tracking activities correctly, that you earn and get credit for all of the points that you deserve um, when you're doing this. It's also going to be one of your responsibilities to get these results to your county coordinator. So you guys are going to send your activity sheets to your county coordinator the county coordinator is going to compile those results and send them to us at the state office. Um, and your county coordinator will give you details on how they want to collect those from you, how often, that kind of stuff. That information is going to come from your county coordinator. Um, so again, when you're looking for information on the forms and looking for that communication, um, that should be when they're telling you when you need to turn it in and how to turn it into them. Um, the other thing we need you to do is encourage other athletes, partners, coaches to join. Um, as I mentioned earlier, anyone um, who's an athlete, partner, coach, or class A volunteer can participate in this and can earn points. So um, your county has a better chance of winning the more people that you get involved in this event. So encourage all your friends within your county program to join this with you. Um, and last, but probably the most important is have fun. I know we've had quite a bit of downtime. I know everyone's excited to get back to action. So have fun doing this. Um, and this is gonna be a really exciting experience, I think, for everyone. So before I show everyone um, the activity listing and the activity tracker, I wanna pause for a second and answer maybe any questions um, that you guys might have. All right, you know how to ask your questions. Yeah, when Alicia? People, yeah, when people are raising your hands, I will go with what's been put into chat. Um, and these may be an answer, Patrick, but I'm just going to go ahead and share them. Um, someone wants to know if they go to Planet Fitness, if that counts. Um, so that's a good question. I'm, I'm going to answer that maybe in a second, but the short answer is that could count. There's, uh, there's one activity where if you, if you have a membership to Planet Fitness and you are already go there to work out and you know you're gonna go there and do a regular workout, yes, that could count as one of the activities. You just need to get that approved by your county coordinator. And the next question is, do you, do you get extra points if you do more? That's a good question. So for this particular half, so remember I mentioned that we're gonna be broken down into first half and second half of the challenge. In this first half, it's just three activities for 10 points. Um, and part of the reason we don't wanna encourage people to do an unlimited amount is a lot of us haven't been as active as we'd like over the last few months because we haven't been able to get out practicing and be active. So. We wanna make sure that as we're starting these activities, we build up. Once we get into the second half of competition, we are going to open it up to where you can do as much activity as you can and earn more points because of that. And then what if you use a wheelchair? It's a great, great question. And so that's where um, in the level one and level M activities, which I'm gonna show here as soon as we get through these questions, um, I think you'll see that we, we tried to think of athletes who are in wheelchairs or who have mobility issues when we were selecting activities. And so I'm hoping, and I think that there are quite a few activities um, that anyone who's in a wheelchair or who has mobility issues can complete and earn points in this challenge. Um, and then another question is, what if you're in between levels? That's a tough one. Um, you know, I would say that if you're in between levels, that's where, you know, maybe, again, try and work with a coach or your county coordinator to try and get their input. Um, I would say if you're in between levels, chances are that by the end of this challenge, you're probably going to be in that higher level. So I would say that you know, if, if you're not sure if you're a level two or a level three, maybe start at level three and you know, make sure you ease your way into things. But I would, I would maybe uh, lean towards the higher level because um, by the end of it, I think you're gonna find that you probably can do those level three activities if you're right on the line. Okay, we have a few questions about um, getting the Excel spreadsheet, which I think you've covered. Um, 
then um, there are quite a few questions on what counts, but I know you said you were going to do that next. So for all of you that are asking about specific activities, let's hold on a minute and then let Patrick share um, his next part of his presentation and see if that answers your questions. Yeah, so the, the, if there are no other questions on kind of the overview of what the challenge is, the next two things that I have to cover are, I'm gonna pull up the listing of activities. So you guys will actually see what the activities are and what, what levels there are and what uh, quantity is required for each activity in each level. And then I will also show you what the tracker looks like. Um, so are there any other questions before I get going on that part? Okay, so this, is the listing of requirements um, for the sports and fitness challenge. So can you um, zoom in on that a little more, Patrick? It's pretty small when you're sharing it. How's that? That's better. A little bit, a little bit more. There we go. Um, and I can, I'll scroll down here in a little bit so that you guys can see what's below here um, on your screen. But um, so again, these are for the first half of competition on June 13th through July 5th. And so you'll notice, um, I think, can I do laser pointer? Um, so if you'll notice up here, you can kind of see there, um, there's a sports and fitness section. And then if I go down, I'm gonna stop doing Okay, um, if I go down, there's a health and well being section. So those are the two categories of activities. Um, in sports and fitness, again, you earn 10 points for each day that you complete any combination of at least three of the activities below. So you'll notice there's the fit five category and then there's the sports category. So you could do three fit five activities and that would earn you 10 points. You could do three sports activities and that would earn you 10 points. Or you could do a combination and you could do two fit five and one sports or two sports and one fit five. It's totally up to you. Um, you can do uh, this for as many or as few days as you'd like. So, you know, we certainly encourage you to do it as many days as you can in the challenge, but we understand that as you're doing this repetitively, you may need a day off to let your body recover. So that's okay. Um, there's no penalty for taking days off. You're just not gonna earn points if you don't complete activities on that day. Um, I mentioned that you can do any combination of activities. I would actually highly recommend that you do that. Um, you know, if you continue doing the same three activities day after day, um, you're gonna possibly overwork your muscles and if you do a variety of activities, you're gonna get a more total body workout, um, and it's gonna work your body in different ways through different activities, um, which will ultimately give you greater benefits in the long run. So don't be afraid to switch things up. You do not have to do the same activities each day. You do need to stay within the same level um, for the competition. So um, again, for the fit five activities then you're going to refer to the fit five cards um most of you know a lot of the sports activities already that are listed down here now one thing that we're getting ready to send out is scott mingle and i actually put to get put together a video of us performing every single one of the activities that you see on this list so if you're not sure how to do a burpee for instance, um, that's okay. We put a video together and you can watch one of us doing a burpee and showing you how to do it. Um, if you're not sure um, you know, how to set up a 10 meter walk or roll, um, maybe because you don't have a tape measure, that's okay. We set up and showed you, um, this is how you can do some of these activities even without the necessary equipment or the regular equipment that you might have at a sports practice. Um, Again, I know earlier someone asked, you know, how can or are there activities for folks that are maybe in a wheelchair? Um, so if you see here, we have a 10 meter walk or roll. Um, so for our level one and level M athletes, 
you can do 10 meters. And so if, if you need to walk, great. If you need to roll because you're in a wheelchair, we've got that on there for you. We've got a 10 meter wheelchair slalom. Um, and then I think you'll see uh, some of these sports activities um, are definitely doable for an athlete who is in a wheelchair. Um, going back up here, you guys will notice that, so the left column is showing all of the activities and then there are three more columns right here. So you'll notice this, sorry, this column is for level one and M right here. This column is for level two and this column is for level three. So once you select which level um, you think you should be at, um, you're gonna do that level for the entire competition. And so you're only going to do the activities and quantities for that level. So you'll notice that for bicep curls, that's only an activity for level one and M. Um, and they're doing five bicep curls per arm. Level two and three, we did not make that an activity for um, because we wanted to make sure that there were options just for those level one and level M athletes because there are other options that are really only for the level two and three athletes that would be maybe a little bit more difficult for someone with mobility issues. Um, so again, pay attention to the columns. So if you're a level two athlete, for instance, notice that burpees you can do at level two or level three. Um, but if you're a level two athlete, you only have to do 10 burpees per day. Um, same thing if you look down here at squats, you'll notice that squats is one that um, is an option for all levels. So if you're level one or M, you know, five per day, level two, 10, level three, 20. Um, there are no partial points. So if you are a level two athlete and you're doing your squats, you need to do the 10 squats um, to get the, for that to count as one of your activities. Doing nine will not complete the requirement for that activity. Now, it's okay if you can't do all 10 of those at once. This is a daily requirement. So you can split the activities up throughout the day. Um, going back to the squatting example, you could do those 10 squats five at a time. So maybe you do five before lunch and five before dinner. Um, you could do it two, 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 and two. You could split it up however you want, as long as you do 10 throughout the day. Um, so again, um, you know, do, holding a plank. Um, I know for me, it, it's hard for me to hold a plank for a minute. So I'd probably have to split it up into two 30-second um, repetitions of it. Um, Going down then, I'll, I'll hold it here on the sports section for a little bit because I know you guys haven't really seen that much yet. Um, again, here's all the activities. I, so there was a question earlier about, can I go to Anytime Fitness and have that count as one of my activities? So you'll see here we have 10 minutes of brisk physical activity approved by your county coordinator. Um, the intention of that is, you know, for someone who maybe has a membership to an Anytime Fitness and they go, you know, they already go there regularly. Or I know some of you are cyclists. Um, some of you are power lifters who maybe have access to weights at your house or, or in a safe environment. We want to make sure that if you can do those activities safely, um, we're okay with you doing them as part of this challenge. That would count as one of your activities um, of the three per day, you know, we ask that you do at least 10 minutes of that activity um, and that it's done at a pace that, you know, really gets your heart pumping um, and, and gets you working. Um, I want to emphasize, though, that if you're if you're not already a power lifter and you don't already lift weights, please don't go out and start lifting weights for this challenge. Um, you know, that's something that powerlifting requires a certified coach. There's another level of training that goes into it that we don't want anyone to get injured um, or you know pull a muscle or anything like that trying to do something that they're not familiar with doing in an unsafe setting so if you're if you don't already lift weights or if you're not already you know a cyclist or, or not familiar with it don't go out and start those activities um, but if you're familiar with them and you have a safe way to do them you can certainly do them as part of this challenge um, Going down then for health and well being challenges. So you'll notice that um, these are the same 
amounts for each level. So for drinking water, we want everyone to drink five bottles of water per day. We want everyone to eat at least five servings of fruit and vegetables per day, um, and so on. So for the health and well-being activities, you'll earn five points for each day that you do at least two of these activities. Um, again, there are no partial points. So if you drink, if you only drink four bottles of water, that doesn't count. You have to make sure you drink five. Um, and again, you can split these out throughout the day. I wouldn't recommend trying to drink five bottles of water in one sitting. Your stomach isn't gonna fe feel very well after doing that. Um, same thing with eating fruits and vegetables. These are all day type of activities. Um, but you know, if you wanna do 10 minutes of prayer or meditation, you could do five minutes in the morning and five minutes at night, and that would fulfill the 10 minute requirement. So again, with all of these activities, they are the daily requirement, and you can split them up um, throughout the day as, as much or as little as you need to. The next thing I'm gonna show you now is the activity tracker. So um, this is what you guys are going to be filling out. Now, what I'm showing you is the Excel version. Um, this, if you have Microsoft or Excel and you have a way for your county coordinator to send this to you, um, it's really easy for you just to type right into this document. Um, this looks exactly the same as what a printed version would look like though. So um, whether you're using Excel or the printed version, the instructions are essentially the exact same. The only difference is instead of typing your name in, you're writing your name in. Um, so typing and writing are kind of gonna be used interchangeably as I'm going through these instructions. Um, each level has its own form. So um, the form that I'm showing you right here, you'll notice is the level two activity tracker. Level one and M has its own form and level three has its own form. It's just a separate Excel file or it's gonna be a separate printed document. It looks the exact same. The instructions are the exact same. The only difference is you're going to see different activities listed here. Patrick, can you zoom in on that a little bit? Uh, yeah. How's that? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. I, give me a, Van Arsdale, give me a thumbs up if that works for you. You were asking for a zoom. Okay. Looks like it works for most people here. Okay. So Thanks. this first tab or the first page are going to be the instructions. And that's what I'm going to verbalize to you now. So this first page, all of these instructions, this is what I'm gonna cover and speak to you. So um, I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time showing this on the screen. Um, the next three pages or three tabs, if you're looking in the Excel version, are for each week of the competition. So I'll zoom in here for you again. So you'll notice in week one runs June 13 through the 19th. In week two, June 20th through the 26th. And in week three, the 27th through July 5th. And week three is a little bit of a longer one just because of when the cutoff is for the first and second half. Um, so there's a few extra days in week three. Um, so as you're looking at this, when you first see your activity tracker, the very first thing you wanna do is put your name up here. So because I'm using Excel, I'm gonna type my name in. If you're using a printed version, just write your name in. And you wanna do this on every single tab or every single page. So I did it on week one. I'm gonna click over to week two and type my name in. I'm gonna click over to week three and type my name in. You wanna make sure your name's on all three tabs. Next thing you wanna do, if you're using Excel and you click on county program, notice it says, please select your county program from the list. Click this drop down, and you've got a menu of all of, oops, sorry, of all of the county programs here. So select your county program. Right now, it looks like I'm a member of Clinton County for this demonstration. Um, and again, you wanna do that on all three of the tabs or sheets. So then as you're going down here, you can see 
I'm going to zoom out a little bit just so you can see a little bit more of the page and more of the activities. Um, but so here are all the Fit5 activities for level two. So this is only showing the level two Fit5 activities because this is the level two form. Um, so level one, that form is only going to show the level one activities. Level three form is only going to show the level three activities. And you'll notice here that where the activities are listed, it tells you on this tracking form how many are required for each activity. So burpees, 10, lunges, 10 per leg, planks, 30 seconds. Um, so it tells you what the requirement is. So you'll notice that each day has its own column. So if I'm starting activities on the 13th and I do my 10 burpees for the day, I'm gonna put an X in this column. And so I typed it in, you could write it in, however you're tracking it. Um, let's say I do 30 seconds of planks, I put an X in that column. And then I wanted to do a sports activity. So I come down here and I did 20 shooting attempts at basketball. So, sorry, I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit so you can see. I know this, well, that's probably too small for you guys. But you can, if we count, there's one, two, three X's. So I did my three activities. So I'm gonna put an X in the row for a daily goal. So on each, um, on the lines for the activity, you're gonna check whether you completed that activity. Where it says daily goal, you need to put an X if you did your three activities for that day. You're gonna do the same thing for the health and well being categories. So I can zoom in on these a little bit. There we go. So if I drink my five bottles of water, I put an X. And candidly, I'm not really a big fruits and vegetables person. I'm a pretty picky eater. So I probably didn't do that on June 13th. Uh, but I did maybe listen to some positive music for 10 minutes. So I put my X in there. And then because I did two of the activities, which is how many you have to do for health and well-being, I put my X right there. It's really important that you put the X for both your activities and your daily goal. This line right here for daily goal under health and well-being and the, the sports and activities or sports and fitness category, that's what your county coordinator is going to be looking at when they're calculating all of the points. So it's really, really important that you guys fill this out accurately um, and keep track of the points. Um, so then at the end, if you're using an Excel file, you're, you're going to want to save it and send it back to your county coordinator. If you're using a printed version, again, work with your county coordinator on how to collect them. Um, even the, the digital versions, your county coordinators are going to give you instructions on how they want you to send these to them and how often they need to collect them. Um, so that's everything on the activity tracker and the activity listing. I know that I just threw a lot of information at you guys. I went over a lot of stuff. So I, I could see the uh, chat bubble pop, uh, going off yeah. as I was talking. I, I anticipate there's quite a few questions. Um, so I'll go ahead and answer those now for you guys. Here's that, here's that we'll do. So Alicia is going to look through the chat room to see all those questions. Let's go to Jason first. Jason, you have your hand raised. Blue hand is raised. Jason, go for it. Good morning, Patrick. I had a question for you. So as far as the bottle water, how many ounces does it have to be to count? You didn't specify. Um, you know, Jason, that's a great question. Um, and I think, I'm, I'm not sure if in the Fit5 cards, it specifies what a bottle of water is. I know that's where we pulled the quantity of bottle of water from. Um, I believe generally a bottle of water is about 16 ounces, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong there. Um, I think the main point of this challenge, though, is we just want to encourage you guys to drink your bottles of water. So if you have a water bottle that's 12 ounces compared to 16 ounces, just drink your five bottles of water. And the main point of this challenge is just to encourage you guys to 
continue and to be healthy and, and get back to a, an active lifestyle because since we've been, you know, not able to do things for the last few months. So, I so would, if I did, sorry. So if I did, I usually use um, like bottled water from like Sam's Club, Sam's Club. Each one is 20 ounces. So if I did two of those a day, I could get my, I could get one of my activity points in, right? Uh, no, I mean, two, I don't know that two of those would be quite enough. I, I think, I think in general, we probably need to say that 16 ounces around is a bottle of water. And so if you multiply that by five, that's 80 total ounces. Um, so your, your 20 ounce bottles, you'd have to drink at least four of them. Thank you. You're welcome. I know that we have a number of athlete leaders out there who have taken introduction to health and fitness. Can somebody help us with that question? Ooh, thanks, Jeff. Let's see. <laughs> let's let's see if the uh, Alps University training has sunk in. Nobody. Anybody? Anybody? I don't see anybody raising a hand. Helping us there. Okay. Alicia, any, uh, oh, Caitlin. Caitlin's got her blue hand. Do you have an answer for us? Please, please have an answer for us. Caitlin, go. You're 16 to 20 ounces. I'm showing a picture. 16 to 20 ounces. Okay. So, Jason, do you see that? So, if we were to do the math, Patrick's got it right. That would be 80 total ounces. And if you've got a 20 ounce bottle, your four would count, Jason. I think we'd be flexible on all this. Again, we're just trying to promote hydration here. Thank you. Yep. Well done, Caitlin. For There we go. Thank you, Caitlin. Joel Donaldson has his blue hand raised. Joel, go for it. What if you have a big cup that holds a lot of water? Would that count? Yeah. It, so, yeah, you don't have to drink your water from a bottle for it to count. If you have a large glass of water, that would count as one bottle. That's a great question, Joel. So, again, the, the emphasis here is just we want you guys drinking your water. So whether it's, you know, out of a bottle of water, out of a large glass, or you know, I know a lot of people have those like large turbis tumblers that they keep their, their drinks in. You can use any of those containers to consume your water. Thanks, Joel. Steve, thank, you've thank got a you. question. Go ahead, Steve. Steve, we got to unmute you first. Steve, can you unmute yourself? Yep. Okay, go for it, Steve. Where would I get the water if I had to get some? <laughs> sure. So um, you don't have to necessarily go out and buy bottled water. Um, you, I mean, however you normally get your water now, if it's from your tap or if you have, you know, one of those dispensers on your fridge, mm -hmm. um, however you get the water is, is perfectly fine. You do not have to go out and buy bottled water or buy a water bottle to do this challenge. Again, you can drink out of anything. You can get your water from anywhere. We just want you guys drinking water throughout the day. Okay. okay. Does that help, Steve? It helps, thank you. All right, you're welcome. Elisha, what do we have in the chat room? Okay, quite a few. So one, um, back to basics, what does the M stand for? Uh, I believe. One level M. Jeff Kirk. It stands for MATP, uh, Motor Activities Training Program. It's for our athletes with severe, profound physical disabilities. They, they usually are in a wheelchair. Okay, thank you. Um, can the family help you track your points? Yes, absolutely. So, you know, I know in a lot of my presentation, I mentioned that you guys need to do this tracking. I should have clarified and said that if you have a family member or caregiver oh. or a friend, maybe if uh, someone that lives nearby and in the same building as you, 
yes, you, you can absolutely get help tracking your activities. Um, and so, yeah, if you have a family member that's willing to help you out, I would absolutely, you know, ask you to thank them for helping you. And, you know, we would welcome that 100%. Um, a few questions on uh, uh, cheating. How um, is there, what, anyway, what would you say about cheating, Patrick, as far as not being honest about your points? Well, that's a good question. And I, you know, I like to think that all of our athletes are good, honest people. I think, I think all of you guys are. And I know you've all signed, uh, you know, a, an athlete code of conduct stating that, you know, you're willing to abide by a certain code. And Part of that code is being honest and, and not cheating and trying to skirt the rules. So, you know, unfortunately, there's really no way that we could track if someone was cheating. A lot of this competition is just based on an honor system. And so we're putting our faith in all of you athletes that you guys are going to basically do the activities that you're telling us that you're doing. Thank you. Um, and then there are a few questions um, about whether you get partial points. So if you don't get all three done, do you get any points at all or no points? That's a good question. So um, if I'm going back here to the screen, um, no, you need to do at least three activities in the day to get the 10 points. So um, if I only did burpees and planks and I didn't do any other activities for the day, you know, hey, good job, I did some burpees and planks, I'm just not earning points for that particular day. Um, on the other side, if you do four activities, you're still only earning 10 points. So you have to do at least three. You can do more, but you're not gonna earn more points. If you don't do at least three, you will not earn those 10 points for that day. Okay, thank you. Marcelo, did you still have a question? I know your hand was up. Go ahead and unmute yourself, Marcelo, and ask your question. Mm, the fit, the exercise are push-ups, squats, sit-ups, jumping jacks. So, so I think Marcelo, are you asking if jumping jacks would count as an activity? No. Oh, he's sharing what's in the fit five. Okay, yeah, so I see. So I think Marcelo's asking, not all of the Fit5 activities are listed under the Fit5 on this form. And so, so a lot of these activities we pulled from the Fit5 cards. However, we did not use all of the Fit5 activities for this particular challenge. Now, Marcelo, let's say you really want to do jumping jacks as part of your activity. You could do jumping jacks and maybe a couple other activities for 10 minutes, and that could count as your 10 minutes of activity for one of the activities. So if there are some fit five activities that maybe aren't listed on here as part of the challenge and you want to do them, you could probably do them for you know 10 minutes and that could count for this 10 minutes of activity line okay does that help yeah okay. awesome thank you Marcel. okay pixel three i'm not You're sure welcome. who that is if you could unmute yourself your screen name is pixel three <laughs> this is jeff from uh, monroe county oh hi uh can we do partners so absolutely absolutely yeah and so are you so yes, unified partners can participate in this challenge. Now, the thing to be careful with is if you have a family member, you know, that, that already lives with you, that's within the same house, they can definitely participate and do these things right alongside you. Um, because we are still under the OA suspension of activities, we are not encouraging anyone to go meet up at a public park with a bunch of other people from their county program to complete these activities. Um, you still need to do them with proper social distancing measures, um, things like that. So it, yes and no, I know that wasn't a very clear answer. So if the person lives with you or they're a family member, yes, you can do it with them. 
if it's, you know, a unified partner that is not a family member or does not live with you, you should not be doing the activities with them in the same location, but you could communicate to them and you guys could maybe do them like over Zoom together or something like that. Okay. Does that, does that answer your question? Yeah. Also, athletes, keep, keep in mind that this is your opportunity to make sure your coaches are out there being physically fit. Yes. You, you, can, you can put it to your coaches to say, hey, you got you to do this to help us earn points because your coaches' points add to your county's total just like yours do. Okay. And we're running low on time, but we could probably fly through a few of these. Bowling has been a big question in here. Uh, Jamie and the rest of you, look at ball toss for accuracy. Well, while you don't necessarily throw the bowling ball, you roll it. That would count within, within that category. So you have to be creative a little bit. We didn't want to put in bowling specifically because not everybody can go to a bowling alley. Some group homes may not take you there. So think about uh, uh, throwing a ball for accuracy could also be going to your backyard and playing bocce. So be creative with this. Did we lose Patrick? Oh, there he is. The other hey. thing I'll, I'll stress just really, really quickly in 30 seconds is, you know, some of the activities reference, um, you know, like some of the Fit5 activities you might use a weight for. You can do these activities without weights. Use a bottle, you know, a, a thing of laundry detergent, a gallon of milk. Um, if that's a little too heavy for you, you can use like a can of soup or a can of vegetables. For things like ball toss, if you don't have a, a ball that you can throw, try using a balled up pair of socks or like a small stuffed animal. Um, get creative with substituting equipment as well um, with these activities. Um, so to summarize, uh, Patrick, is it fair to say that if your activity is not specifically listed, you can use it for the 10 minutes of activity? So if you um, want to swim, swim for 10 minutes and that counts. Yes, but you need to get approval from your county coordinator with swimming specifically. You know, if, if you have a pool at your house and you can go out in your backyard and do some laps in your pool and you're already a swimmer, hey, great, go do that. Um, what we don't want um, are, you know, again, counties getting together or people getting together at a, you know, um, a large public pool to do that. So swimming would be acceptable, but only if you have the means to do it kind of on your own. Patrick, I think, I think we keep going with these questions. I mean, we've got quite a few blue hands and I'm not sure we hit all the chat room. I, I'm, so happy got, to, I'm happy to keep answering as many okay. questions as we need to. And then okay. Bu Buzz Francie, Buzz Francie, we may eat into your time just a little bit here, but I think these are some really good questions. Uh, again, blue hands, chat room. So let's go to Jason next. Blue hands raised, Jason, go for it. Patrick, I had a question for you. You just brought up an interesting point, and before I act on it, I want to make sure I understood you correctly. If you do not have weights at your house, you can use a soup can or something of that sort and still do the activity. Can you confirm that? Yeah, that, yes, uh, absolutely. So yeah, just to confirm, if you don't have weights at your house, you can use pretty much any heavy object as a substitute for a weight. In, in the video that Scott and I put together, which um, I saw, uh, I think yesterday, Nate got up onto YouTube for me. So hopefully we'll be, we'll be able to share that link um, on Monday to all of you so that you can watch. But some of the things we use are you know, a tub of laundry detergent, a gallon of milk, a heavy book, um, a two liter of pop, although hopefully you guys aren't drinking a lot of pop right now. Um, any heavy object that you can grab in your hand and lift can be substituted for a weight. There's no requirement on, you know, if, if you're doing um, uh, curls, for instance, there's no requirement on how much weight you use for those curls. It's, it's whatever you're comfortable with. Jamie Dillon, Thank you. you're next. Thanks, Jason. Jamie, you're up.
Jamie? All right, let's go to Cindy then, Cindy. I just wanted to make sure that I was doing the right thing. Uh, my unified partner and I, Lauren, um, we've been walking for off and on for about the last three weeks and we keep six feet apart. Well, it's actually six to 12 feet apart because I walk really slow, but um, we're up to like a mile and a half now. So, so I'm hoping yes. that that's, Okay. Yes, that's fine. Okay. We we cannot have organized practices, but we cannot we can't prohibit two athletes who want to get together from meeting at a park and doing some yeah. of this together. We just can't have organized practices. Cool. Thank you. And and also keep in mind 10 minutes, some of you are walking way way past 10 minutes. Yeah. Keep doing that. Yeah. And we had to create we had to create something with athletes in mind who probably haven't done much in the yeah. two months or whatever, and they've just been sitting on the couch. So, you know, Cindy, if you've been doing some, some stuff like that, fantastic. That's great. Well, um, a mile and a half now. Awesome. Way to go. Pixel three, you're, you're back on with the blue, blue hand. Yes. Um, are the open ceremonies going to be on video? We'll talk about that in the upcoming session, okay? That'll be at 11.45. Okay, so I have another question real quick. Go for it. Okay, I work at Lowe's, so I walk a lot. Now, is that going to count? You know, we'll trust your judgment there. I get like so 15,000 steps a day. I would say that counts then. If you're getting that many steps in a day, that's that's more than I get. So congrats to you, man. Thank you. Hey, some questions from chat. Um, some uh, kind of clarification on water. Is it going to be flavored water, um, plain water? What are you, what is qualifying as water? Let's, would... let's go to our water expert and Caitlin. <laughs> Hi, guys. <laughs> I will say I would put fruit, watermelon, and strawberries, or what kind of berries you like, or um, just any kind of water. I do lemon water at work, and I pretty much like it, because I got to stay hydrated, because it's hot in the plant. Yep. There you go. I would so say, your question. <laughs> Caitlin, I would say um, flavoring's fine, but if you've added sugar, I don't think it counts. Agreed. No sugar. Oh, I can't. Okay. No, I can't. <laughs> Mom <laughs> muted me. <laughs> but yeah, I would say, yeah, just plain water if you can. But if you can't get to water, probably try to get to your sink or uh, refrigerator if you can. Thanks, Caitlin. Um, a question. My husband is a Class A volunteer. Should he do this too? Yes, absolutely. We, again, any, any athlete, unified partner, coach or class a volunteer um, is eligible to participate in this and we encourage all of those folks to participate in this um, i also want to mention before maybe some more questions come through and it gets cycled up the chat i think i saw that nate just posted the link to the youtube video that scott and i put together in the chat box um, so it's it's I, as more questions are coming through i see it trickling up the chat screen there um, but there's a link to a YouTube video in the chat right now. Um, and that is the demonstration of Scott and I doing all of the activities um, on the listing. So make sure you check that out and that'll give you hopefully a good idea. In that video, we talk about some of the items that you can use to substitute um, for equipment if needed. Um, and then to clarify Jamie's question, she's wanna know glasses equaling bottles. Um, that is about 80 ounces. So depending on how big your glass of water is, um, just kind of have an idea about how large that glass of water is. Yeah. Um, Allie, I think I'm, I'm gonna read this as is. You tell me if I got it right or not. Does a mom point count? Allie, I'm not really sure what you mean. If you can clarify, I'll come back and look for your clarification. If, if she's asking if her mom's points will count, yes, they do. Okay. So, Allie, let me know if that answered your question or not. So, um, Allison, this, this is your chance to get your mom off the couch and earning some points. 
you are now the coach here. <laughs> Um, lots of questions about, well, the notes will be available or can they be sent to people? So, um, if you want to just kind of clarify where people are getting the notes and the slideshow, you just, there's some requests for your PowerPoint slides as well. Um, yeah, I can certainly a PowerPoint slide. Um, I believe I know we're recording this session right now. So I think we can probably send out the link to this afterwards for everyone. Um, but yeah, and any of the stuff that I shared, I, I'm certainly happy to sh um, send out to everyone after this. So if you guys want my PowerPoint presentation, I will get that out to you guys. Okay, and then the forms and everything county coordinators would have. Um, we yep. link the notes on the registration page afterwards um, in a few, within a few days to so check there as well. So I, I, I'm not sure that there is necessarily a registration page. Oh, I'm sorry, for this webinar series. Okay, yeah. We have a registration page that has all the notes from all the sessions on it. So yes, thank you. So to clarify, not a registration page for Summer Games, it's the webinar series page where you enter register. All There are links there for every session on the notes. If there were handouts, any of those things will be there for you. So check back there, look for an email, check with your county coordinator, um, quite a few ways to get the information. Um, uh, question, volunteers need to be class A volunteers? So, yes. Okay. Yes, they do. Um, general question, can family do it? As, as long as they are a unified partner, coach, or class A volunteer, yes. Okay. Um, as a volunteer, can I participate when my points be counted towards my county? Yes, yes, yes. So the, it's a unified competition. Um, all right, I hope, I think everybody, I've seen all the chats. I apologize if I miss one. Oh, Amy wants to know if she can lift her dog. <laughs> if your dog likes it, I guess. Sure, sure. <laughs> and send us a video of that. <laughs> that would be a great video. And Marty, I, I, are you asking, um, Marty, do you want to ask your question? I'm not sure if you're asking for a suggestion on adaptation or if it's an approved, if, uh, if Bocce is an approved activity. No, uh, how do we, how do you want us to measure the Bocce? That's what I'm saying, because we have a lot of Bocce players in our county. It's a good, good question. And as, as you know, from playing Bocce, the Polina can kind of end up in multiple different locations. <laughs> yes. And so, that's why we're not necessarily telling you guys it needs to be a certain distance away. Okay. I mean, do probably just what, you know, adapt it to each athlete, move it around and do it from di different distances each time. Okay. Um, I, think, I think we would prefer that it's just kind of from random distances so they learn how okay. to gauge the weight of their throw as opposed to only throwing from 30 feet okay. every single time. Okay, gotcha. Just go, Thank you. Just go play and have fun. Yep. Um, oh, thank you. Jason Plant corrected the link. There was a period at the one um, that was posted first. You need to take that period out to make the link work. Um, a kind of question, Patty, I'm just going to expand your question a little bit, Patty. So there's a few questions about just daily activities, like Jeff was saying, you know, walking around at work. You have a question about gardening. Um, some of just those you're moving around the day cleaning the house, whatever those kinds of things, how would they um, think about those, Patrick? Um, I don't. We, we got to trust you. Is it getting your heart rate going? Yeah. That, that's probably the big one to me is, is it getting your heart rate going? Uh, I don't know about you, but on a, in a hot June day when I'm out mowing the grass, my heart gets up a little bit. Yeah. I would think, I would count mowing. I'm not sure that planting a flower though counts. You know, it's again, we, we're giving you some la latitude here to be flexible and we got to trust you. Um, clarification, um, what's considered class A? I've been a mentor to an athlete for a number of years now and I've participated in unified sports before. Does that classify me as class A? Yeah, class A means you've done the background check, you've done all the online trainings. We have an application on file for you. And then so, unified partners have to be class A, correct? 
Yes. So when you, so if, when you go into the system and become a class A volunteer that gives you the opportunity to be a leader, a coach, a unified partner, all of it, um, because for some sports you'll be a partner, other sports you'll be a coach, and for this year you're a mentor. So it all counts. It's all class A. Um, still some more questions about specific um, yeah. activities. Do you want to keep going, Jeff? Or? Most of it's, again, you, be creative, be flexible, and your fallback is always the 10 minutes of physical activity. Right. That's always your fallback. So golf, yes. Running, yes, 10 minutes. You know, just we gave we gave you kind of that that catch all there. Charlotte, um, I'm not sure what you're asking. Are you asking how to uh, why don't you unmute and ask your question, Charlotte? So let's say you have an athlete that would like to show that they're actually doing that activity, because some of us like know how to like do videos and stuff. What if they want to show others? Like, how can we show others that we are actually doing the activities? That's, That's a great, great question. Be more for PR than to prove that you're doing it. So if you want to share it through Facebook, it's probably the easiest way to do it. But you can send, you can send me, you can send us those photos. What we'll be doing is just using it to promote on social media all that you are doing. We're, we, we're not going to use that to for you to prove to us that you earn points. We got to trust you. So if, if you want to use it for your athletes to prove that they're doing it, that's up to you, but you don't need to send it our way. We will just use it for PR, public relations. Get it out there. Okay, I think that's, I thought, go ahead. I, I think it's time for a little break. I know Patrick's been great at this and and we yep. need to move on to our next session. So like our customary way of thanking everybody, let's give Patrick a little round of applause. Thanks for having me on, everyone. It was great talking to you. Patrick, thanks. Thanks for all your work. I know Mr. Mingle, I think, has been on too. So Scott Mingle also. We also got to throw some love to uh, Mike and Tori and Itzel at our office for helping come up with some of this stuff too. So good job to the sports programs, health schools team that that put this together so well yeah, done